He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, church, church family. family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Lena, can you say it? Happy. Say Happy Easter, Lena. Happy Easter. Hi, I'm Rich Williams. Hi, I'm Yvonne Williams. He is risen. Indeed he is. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're celebrating in quiet and solitary ways but it's a celebration nonetheless. Our circumstances have changed, but our Savior hasn't. Pastor John and I love you, and we wish you a blessed and very happy, happy Easter. Easter. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Tammy. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the, the Sloan, Sloan family. family. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, Dayton, Dayton Avenue, Avenue family. family. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. We look forward to joyfully worshiping together soon. We serve a risen Savior. If I call this stuff from the recliners. Hi, we're Jeff and Char Gates. And we've been doing some renovation in our basement during our shelter at home. You know, I just can't wait until it's done. That reminds me, Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. We're so thankful our salvation is complete. Happy, Happy Resurrection, Resurrection Day. Day. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter Dayton, Dayton Avenue. Avenue. From the guys' family. We miss you. Hi church family, we're about to go off on our daily family walk and we just wanted to let you know that we love you, we miss you, and we're praying for you. Uh, we're sorry we can't worship together, but we're excited for when we can do so again soon. It is well. It is well. well with my soul it is well it is well with my We're standing out in front of our tree, enjoying uh, the blooming and new life we have in the spring and being mindful of the new life we have in Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter greetings from the O'Neills. Greetings from the Lehuat family. 
We want to wish our church family a happy and blessed Easter. We love and miss you all. from the Antonies. Yeah! Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter from the Henderson family. We miss our church family. We hope everybody has a happy Easter. Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue family from the Traegers. We can't wait to see everyone. We're looking forward to that day. It's an empty tomb. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from the Nelsons and the Davions. Praise the name of Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, church family. family. We, we love and miss, miss you all. all. Hello, church family. We love you. All, All is, is well, well, for he, he has, has risen. risen. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! From the Jenkins family! <laughs> Happy Easter! He is risen! Hi Dayton Avenue! Wanted to say Happy Easter from the Straws. He is risen! He is risen indeed! Hi Dayton Avenue! Happy Easter from the Carringtons! Sending you all lots of hugs! Sending you lots of hugs! Oh! <laughs> Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue from Mackenzie and Mimosa. We miss you and can't wait to be back together soon. Happy Easter, everyone from the Shavies. We miss you all. We look forward to gathering again as soon as we can. And I just wanna share uh, a brief encouragement with you from Psalm 22, the psalm that Jesus quoted from the cross, where at the end of that it says, All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules the nation. All who prosper on the earth will eat and bow down. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Even the one who cannot preserve his life their descendants will serve him. The next generation will be told about the Lord. They will come and declare his righteousness 
to a people yet to be born, they will declare what he has done. Let's declare his righteousness this morning as we worship apart and look forward to the time where we can worship again together. Happy Easter, Happy Easter. Easter. See you soon. Hello, Hello brothers, brothers and sisters. sisters. We are the Liu family. Happy Easter. He is risen. risen. During this time, we want to especially pray for your well-being and safety. Please take care and God bless you. All right, well, let's get ready for our Easter greeting. You know, I wish Pastor could do something about this whole sermon note handout thing. You know, why can't he either do something with that or at least put, like, pauses in his sentences? You know, like, welcome to Dayton Baptist Church. And let's turn in our to Romans chapter verse 23. You know, something like that. What do you think, honey? Oh, honey, just get over it. All right, well, let's do our Easter greeting anyway. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from the, the Gruenbergs! Hello, Dayton Avenue family. Easter greetings from the Brights. Though we miss you and long to see all of our family and friends again, we are able to patiently wait and not grow weary because of the hope that we have in our risen Savior. Also, we promise Maggie isn't going crazy. <laughs> Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue, from the Hunnemeyer family. Jesus, roll that stone! Sunday, 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 the greatest comeback ever! Happy Easter from the...
Good morning and welcome to our live stream of Dayton Avenue Baptist Church. My name is Roger O'Neill. I'm the interim worship leader here. We're so glad whether you're a member or you've just been surfing on the internet, coming across our webcast today. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Today we are not gathered corporately, but we're gathered together as family units around your computer or your TV. But we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ nonetheless. We can't be stopped from doing that because today was one of the greatest days of the church here celebrating Easter, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, our live stream will consist of some pre-recorded materials from corporate worship experiences in the past, and also some special musics that have been done specifically this for this occasion. So thank you so much for joining with us today. Hope you enjoy worshiping together.
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ.
the victim of a cross of execution, the Lamb of God that sacrificed his life, and the sky grew dark and the rain poured down, the price of my redemption was so high, for on that hill was done a great transaction, as God poured out the ransom for my sin, I can walk away, I am truly free from the prison exchange, a wondrous exchange, an offer so great, I can scarcely believe, his crown for my shame, his loss for my gain, his death. in his sight though I am to blame I have been redeemed from the sin for which my Lord was crucified a wondrous exchange a wondrous exchange an offer so great I can scarcely his crown for my shame, his loss for my gain, his death for my life. What a wondrous exchange! A wondrous exchange, a wondrous exchange, an offer so great I can scare. stand in the morning and who told the ocean you can only come this far and who showed the moon where to hide to leave it whose words alone can catch a falling star
Good resurrection morning, church family. I am a little disappointed because this is not our normal Easter Sunday morning celebration. This place is empty. We're gathered by live stream today. We're not wearing the new clothes that we've bought for Easter. We're not gathering the family together for photo opportunities. But we are gathering together today to worship because this is the day that we celebrate in a special way, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So while many things about this particular Easter in 2020 is unfamiliar, the reason that we celebrate Resurrection Sunday is the same. It is our center, it is our security, it is our hope, it's the truth. And that is why we've come together to worship today. You're gonna to need your Bibles if you would open them with me to John chapter 20, I want to look at the resurrection account briefly today. And as you're finding your way to John chapter 20, let me just quickly mention the fact that normally at this time of year, we're receiving a special Lottie Moon Easter missions offering. And this offering supports missionaries around the world. Because of the, the global pandemic, Many of our international missionaries have had to come home. In fact, in our own mission home, uh, we had missionaries scheduled from Africa to come in for their stateside mission um, here for the next year. They were supposed to start in June, but they've actually just landed in the area and we're trying to get the mission home ready for them. All that to say that our international missionaries that are serving in so many places, they've found their lives significantly disrupted as well. And we're going to receive that special Lottie Moon Easter missions offering even this year. So I wanna encourage you that if you would prayerfully consider giving an extra gift toward that Lottie Moon missions offering, I would appreciate it. In the weeks to come, we'll be showing some videos to highlight what God is doing around the world. So please put that on your back burner and uh, you can make a special gift that way. If you are giving online, you can do it that way. Or if you're sending in your gifts through the mail, you can do it that way as well. I also want to let you know that next Sunday, we're going to be finishing our series in Revelation. We're going to get to the end of the book of Revelation and talk about the new heavens and the, and the new earth. So looking forward to that next week, but I've been looking forward to today. I hope that so far you've been able to worship the Lord in a very encouraging way this morning via this live stream service. Do you have your Bibles open to John chapter 20? I'm gonna be reading as we go along. And so would you just bow with me as I begin with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can celebrate an empty tomb today. We are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for all that this day means to us. And it's not just once a year that we celebrate the resurrection. When we gather to worship on the first day of the week, we do it on that day because that is the, the day that you rose from the dead. And so in commemoration of that every week, we celebrate the central truth of our faith that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our Creator left heaven became a man, lived a perfect life, willingly went to the cross to be the sacrifice, to pay the debt, the sin debt that we owed and to make a way for us to come to God. And by your power, you accomplished all of that. By your power, you satisfied all the demands that our sin required. By your power, you demonstrated that everything that you promised was true by rising from the dead, coming out of that grave, and we celebrate the resurrection today. Our faith is not a matter of our making a way to you. Our faith is a matter of celebrating how you made a way to reconcile us. And so we worship you today and we commit our time around your word. And I pray this in Jesus name, amen. The gospel accounts of the resurrection all indicate that the followers of Jesus did not understand how significant the resurrection was, at least not immediately. The gospel accounts tell us that it kind of gradually dawned on them. And when it finally dawned on them, when they finally grasped the fact that 
the tomb is empty, but Jesus is alive. He's risen from the dead. When they grasped that, it made all the difference. It changed everything. In fact, that's what the title of the sermon today is. The resurrection changes everything. We have a little glimpse of that as we read through John chapter 20. And we have accounts of several of the different followers of Jesus Christ. So I want to look at how the resurrection made a difference in their lives. So if you would look with me now at John chapter 20, I want to read a few verses here starting in verse 1. It says this, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb. Now I want you to skip down to verse 10. I'm skipping over the parts where it says they made it to the tomb, they went in, they saw that it was empty, and then it says that they returned. So in verse 10 it says, The disciples went away again to their own homes, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Now, this is Mary's story. Mary's world had come crashing in on her. She had been a follower of Jesus. Jesus had released her from demonic oppression. And she had been a very faithful follower of Jesus during his ministry. She'd seen him crucified. She saw where they had laid him. She was going back to anoint his body with spices and her world had fallen apart. She was weeping. In fact, the very fact of her weeping is prominent as we read in those verses. John's gospel, John is recording in his gospel, he notes that she's weeping. The angels mention that she's weeping. Jesus asks her why she's weeping. Her whole world had come crashing down and she had nothing left but tears. But when she grasped the resurrection, that it was not that her, the body was stolen or taken away. It was not just that the tomb was empty. It was that it was empty because Jesus was risen. He was alive. When that truth gripped her, it changed everything. It changed specifically her weeping into joy. She is clinging onto Jesus, her Savior. And it changed her weeping to joy. The resurrection changes everything. Let's keep on reading in our verses, starting in verse 18. So Mary Magdalene came. She leaves the tomb area after speaking with Jesus and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. The disciples were going through despair, just like Mary was. Now, their despair didn't cause them to weep uncontrollably, maybe. But their despair turned them to fear. Do you see what it said? It says they were gathered together in a room where the doors were shut for fear of the Jews. You see, they had watched their Messiah, whom they had placed their faith in. They devoted years of their life to following him. 
and being his disciples and they had seen him being treated as a criminal. They'd seen him being crucified. They too had seen him die and be placed into a tomb. And they were afraid that because they were his followers, the same people that put him to death were going to be pursuing them now. They had fear. But when they grasped that the tomb was empty, not just because the body was missing, that the tomb was empty because Jesus had risen, he was alive. And when that full reality gripped them, it changed everything for them. It turned their fear into peace. P Jesus says, peace be with you. And we see when we get to the book of Acts how those very same ones who are filled with fear, when they're brought in front of the same council that accused and condemned Jesus, Peter speaks and preaches with great boldness and courage. And he says, you put to death the Messiah. You need to repent and call out to him for salvation. His fear was turned to courage. The resurrection changes everything. And in this particular chapter of John chapter 20, there is one more account of a follower of Jesus by the name of Thomas. So look with me at verse 24. Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, reach here with your finger and see my hands and reach here with your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. See, Thomas, his reaction was doubt and despair. And Jesus came to him and when the full impact of the resurrection happened to Thomas, his doubt was erased and he just worshiped my Lord and my God. His doubt was turned to assurance. <laughs> these are great accounts of how the resurrection changed the lives of these followers of Jesus. But the question today is really, what about us? I mean, it, it changed them, it changed everything for them, but how has the resurrection changed everything for us? So this particular sermon could be summed up really very shortly. I could just put it this way. Jesus' death on the cross for our sin has no power without the tomb being empty and Jesus being alive. <laughs> but together, Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection change everything. It ought to change everything. The resurrection ought to change everything for us. So. We're not celebrating Easter in the normal way here at church. We're celebrating it at home via, via live stream, right? And frankly, being quarantined in our homes is getting old. It's getting old. It, it's probably in many of our cases produced these same things. It's produced tears like with Mary. It's produced fears like with the disciples. It's produced doubt and despair like with Thomas. We're, we're huddled together in our homes, but we're celebrating Easter today. We're celebrating the resurrection today. It may be a strange situation for us right now because of this pandemic, but I want you to think about this. Just, we're in the middle of this pandemic. We've been quarantined for a number of days. Many have been sick, many are struggling, many have fears and doubts and tears. Imagine with me, if on Wednesday, we turned on the television and there was this amazing discovery. There's been a cure found for COVID-19. <laughs> and even better than that, it doesn't require anybody to go to the hospital and get any shots. You can do it right in your home. Everybody can do it. All you have to do is spray yourself all over with Windex. <laughs> so, so can you imagine if that were true? If three days from now, all of this cloud that's over us now was lifted and everything was changed. If the, if the enemy was defeated, there would be people running out of their houses, singing and dancing in the streets. The stock market would go through the roof. 
Um, there'd be a traffic jam out here on Dayton Avenue. People would be jamming into this building for a hug fest. <laughs> Everything would change if the enemy of the virus was defeated and something simple could defeat it. <laughs> now, Windex only cures things in the movies, right? And that's kind of a poor example, but really the resurrection has defeated the enemy. The enemy is not a virus, not a little virus that we can't see. The enemy is sin and death and hell. And Jesus has conquered all of that. The tomb is empty. He is alive. He is risen. And we say he is risen. He is risen indeed. But I think the word indeed isn't really strong enough. I think when the full reality of the truth of the resurrection should hit us, we should say, he is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Woohoo. There's nothing that could possibly be better news than the fact that our sins have been paid for. Our sins can be forgiven by faith in Jesus Christ. And when the truth and the impact of that reality grips us, it really should change everything. I've told you many times how I grew up in a pastor's home. My dad was a pastor, so I was always at church. I was always hearing the stories from the Bible. I was always listening in church. But there came a point in my life when I was a boy when all of these things started to make sense. It wasn't like I understood it all immediately. It was kind of like how the followers of Jesus didn't immediately understand the resurrection. But gradually, all of those truths that I was being taught from God's Word began to make sense. And when the impact of it was understood, I realized I was a sinner, that my sin was why Jesus had to come and die on the cross, that He paid for me. He took my place on the cross. I understood that I was a sinner and I needed Him to forgive me. And so, when I was a boy, even though I didn't understand everything, and I didn't understand the full impact of the resurrection, I knew enough, gradually that truth had dawned on me, I knew enough that I needed to confess my sin to God, to admit that Jesus had to die for me and believe that Jesus died for me and that He rose again and He could forgive me. And as a boy, I prayed a very simple prayer that He would do that for me. And all my life, as I've lived my life studying God's Word and living the best that I could for Jesus, that truth has gradually grown bigger and bigger and bigger in my life. And so when I come to the resurrection, when I come to celebrate Easter Sunday and to preach on this, this is really the central theme. If Jesus just died as a good person and didn't have power over death, then we would be, of all people, most miserable because if He couldn't conquer death, if he couldn't keep his promise, then there'd be no eternal hope for all of us. But when we grasp the reality of all of the truth that is in God's word, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through him. And when that truth grabs us and grips us, it can change everything. Would you just bow with me for a moment? There are some of us perhaps that are watching this video that have never come to a point in our lives where we, like, like when I was a little boy, have confessed our sin and placed our faith, as small as that faith might be, placed it in Jesus Christ. And if that's you, if you've never trusted Christ, can I say that you could pray a very simple prayer just like I did when I was a boy. You don't have to understand everything about the Bible. You just have to understand a few things and you need to confess God, I know I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. You need to understand, Jesus died on that cross because of my sin, and I believe that he died for me. I believe that he rose again, that he had power over death, and I'm, I'm calling out to you to forgive me. I'm placing my faith and my trust in what Jesus did, and I'm asking you to save me and forgive me. And when we, do a, when we pray a simple prayer like that and we mean it from our heart, God sees and knows and He is faithful to His Word. And His Word says, if we call on the name of the Lord, 
If we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And so, if that's you today, I, I implore you, I beg you, I encourage you to commit yourself to Jesus Christ and to believe in him today. That is the reason why we celebrate Easter. That is the core. No matter what all else changes in this world, that is the core, that is our security. That is our hope, that's our joy, that's our peace, that's our safety. And you can have that too by faith in Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we conclude our time today around your word, I pray that you would grip us with the fact that the empty tomb changes everything. It's not just about the cross, it's about the cross in the contrast of an empty tomb. You have risen. This is a new day to a new life because of what Jesus accomplished on our behalf for us when he was here the first time. Lord, we believe that you're coming back and you're gonna make all things new. And so we want to worship you and celebrate your resurrection today, this day especially on Easter Sunday morning. So Lord, we commit ourselves and our time to you and I ask that you would draw each one of us closer to yourself. If there's one who has listened to this broadcast who does not know you, that today would be the day that you would give them faith to believe and courage to repent and to trust Jesus Christ for their eternal salvation. I pray all this in his strong name. Amen. God bless you. Have a marvelous Easter time today. And we're going to close this live stream service with the greetings that were sent in to us from our church family. So we're greeting one another via video today. God bless you. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, church, church family. family. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> Lena, can you say it? Say happy Easter, Lena. Happy Easter. Hi, I'm Rich Williams. Hi, I'm Yvonne Williams. He is risen. Indeed he is. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're celebrating in quiet and solitary ways, but it's a celebration nonetheless. Our circumstances have changed but our Savior hasn't. Pastor John and I love you, and we wish you a blessed and very happy, happy Easter. Easter. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Tammy. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, happy Easter, Easter from, from the, the Sloan, Sloan family. family. Hello, Dayton Avenue family. Easter greetings from the Brights. Though we miss you and long to see all of our family and friends again, we are able to patiently wait and not grow weary because of the hope that we have in our risen Savior. Also, we promise Maggie isn't going crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy Easter from the Kurt Familia. <laughs> Hello, Hello brothers and sisters. sisters. We are the Liu family. Happy Easter. He He's risen. risen. During this time, we want to especially pray for your well-being and safety. Please take care and God bless you. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, Dayton, Dayton Avenue, Avenue family. family. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. We look forward to joyfully worshiping together soon. We serve a risen Savior. Happy Easter from the Leclerc. Hi, we're Jeff and Char Gates. And we've been doing some renovation in our basement during our shelter at home. You know, I just can't wait until it's done. That reminds me, Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. We're so thankful our salvation is complete. Happy, Happy Resurrection, Resurrection Day. Day. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter Dayton, Dayton Avenue. Avenue. From the guys' family. We miss you. Praise the name of Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter, church family. We love and miss you all. Hi, Dayton Avenue. Wanted to say Happy Easter from the Straws. Hi, Dayton Avenue. Happy Easter from the Carringtons. 
sending you all lots of hugs. Sending you lots of hugs. Oh! <laughs> Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue from Mackenzie and Mimosa. We miss you and can't wait to be back together soon. Happy Easter. Hi church family, we're about to go off on our daily family walk and we just wanted to let you know that we love you, we miss you, and we're praying for you. Uh, we're sorry we can't worship together, but we're excited for when we can do so again soon. Greetings from the Lee White family. We want to wish our church family a happy and blessed Easter. We love and miss you all. It is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul. It, it is, is well. well. It is well with my soul. Hello, church family. We love you. All, All is, is well, well, for he, he has, has risen. risen. Happy Easter! He is risen! We're standing out in front of our tree enjoying uh, the blooming and new life we have in the spring and being mindful of the new life we have in Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter greetings from the O'Neills. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter from the Henderson family. We miss our church family. We hope everybody has a happy Easter. Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue family from the Traegers. We can't wait to see everyone. We're looking forward to that day. It's an empty tomb. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Howdy from the Antonys. Yeah! Happy Easter from the Nelsons and the Babyons. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter, everyone, from the Shavies. We miss you all. We look forward to gathering again as soon as we can. And I just want to share... Uh, a brief encouragement with you from Psalm 22, the psalm that Jesus quoted from the cross, where at the end of that it says, All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you. For kingship be belongs to the Lord. He rules the nation. All who prosper on the earth will eat and bow down. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Even the one who cannot preserve his life. Their descendants will serve him. The next generation will be told about the Lord. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people yet to be born. They will declare what he has done. Let's declare his righteousness this morning as we worship apart and look forward to the time where we can worship again together. Happy Easter, Happy Easter. Sir. See you soon. All right, well, let's get ready for our Easter greeting. You know, I wish Pastor could do something about this whole sermon note handout thing. You know, why can't he either do something with that or at least put like pauses in his sentences? You know, like, welcome to Dayton Baptist Church. And let's turn in our to Romans chapter verse 23. You know, something like that. What do you think, honey? Oh, honey, just get over it. All right. Well, let's do our Easter greeting anyway. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the, the Gruenbergs. Gruenbergs. Happy Easter, Dayton Avenue, from the Hunnemeyer family. Jesus, roll that stone! Sunday, 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 the greatest comeback ever! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy, Happy Easter! Easter! From the Jenkins family! <laughs> Please. 